Hi guys and gals, Double B Billy Boudreaux, aka Russell Gamer here, and since we just finished watching TNA Impact, I figured, you know, give you the results and my reactions to a few of the things that happened here. Uh, they open up with another promo, this time is Fortune coming out, and the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels is asking to join them, and then we have Immortal coming out to um, oppose them, Ric Flair, Matt Hardy, Bully Ray, Abyss. I'm very surprised that Ric Flair resists his urge to touch Daniels in the crotch. Any, anyway, the um, Daniels goes on the uh, microphone and says, "No, no, the Immortal might not want him. Hogan may not want him, but the network's the one that's uh, wanting him." So, Hulk Hogan agreed to that, and then also made a match for tonight. Later on the night, it would be the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels taking on Bully Ring. Now, Anderson's in the back, apparently just getting ready, either or hopping on his laptop or whatever he's doing, and uh, he's getting a card from Sting. You know, to kind of, you know entice him to a fight but um the next thing we see is hulk hogan is actually complaining to eric bischoff complaining about this the network and getting involved in the show now i get the feeling that this kind of resembles if you think back to ecw when ecw was on tnn the involvement they had with saying like the network was being involved in uh, ecw decisions this is what it's kind of reminding me of, of what happened in ecw when it was on tnn now we have a, a match with Mexican America taking on Tommy Dreamer and Devon, essentially what's left of EB 2.0 and TNA. Um, very back and forth match, but um, in the end it was uh, Mexican America getting the wind over Dreamer and Devon. Now at the end of the match, um, Sarita and Rosita were taking off the mantle, might, might I add, uh, on the floor, might I add, a very nice camera angle by the cameraman for TNA. Thank you very much for that. And uh, <laughs> I'm a perv. Anyway, <laughs> um, they, um, what, what, what was going to happen is um, Hernandez was going to do the border toss finishing move on Dreamer over the top rope where he was going to land on his head on the concrete. But um, Matt Morgan intercepted him and pretty much saved Dreamer. And Mexican America ended up backing up, you know, typical heel fashion. In the back, Winter and Angelina were in the back talking about, you know, why is Winter, I'm sorry, why is Angelina teaming up with with Velvet for their uh, Knockouts Tag Team title match later tonight. And then, of course, we still see her, Angelina, drinking a drink, basically being drugged by Winner. Um, I don't know, a roofie or something or some sort of hypnotic drug. I'm not into that kind of thing. I don't even know how it works or anything like that. But, you know, Ashley made mention to me during the Berlung TV broadcast when we were watching it that this storyline is kind of getting over the top. And I have to agree with him. You know, I think it's just getting a little bit way too over the top. I mean... I don't know. Maybe you guys can post your thoughts about that as well. Then basically, um, we see a Samoa Joe taking on Murphy from Gunner and Murphy. Basically, Murphy job to Samoa Joe. But um, the Pope came out and uh, apparently slaughtered some poor helpless animals to make a hat and a and a jacket that he was wearing. Uh, you guys would have to see TNA Impact to know what I'm talking about. And Pope was only on commentary. Basically, this is only like a 45 second match in a, in essence. And you know, they only gave Samoa Joe and Pope 45 seconds to work the angle and then get off TV. Maybe maybe that's TNA's management's way of saying that, you know, we're getting tired of your angle as well. And it's coming to a close at the pay-per-view. Then we had Sarita and Rosita defending the knockouts tag title against the beautiful people. And, of course, Angelino still in her zombie trance. Like that. And... Basically, during the match, and Winner came out and just made a gesture like this, getting Angelina to turn on Velvet Sky and attack her, which f caused their team to lose. Uh, Serena Rosita is still the knockouts uh, tag team champions. Now, Anderson has been taunted all night long by the Sting cards, and he was up in the, the rafters looking for Sting. Now, when the camera was turned to him, we see somebody wearing a jacket. We're all thinking, it's Sting. Then the camera turns around after the, this person continues to attack him. It turns out to be a swerve, and it's RVD who's the one who's attacking him. I think that was a good swerve. I think that was a good place to do a swerve for the RVD Sting Anderson angle. I thought that was a good timing on that one. And then we had Sting and RVD come out, basically cut a promo again, more for the the World Heavyweight title and the pay per view. And then we get Hogan coming out, making a match for later on tonight. Sting taking on RVD. Then we see Brian Kendrick 
Chris Saban and Suicide take on Generation Me and Robbie E. Now, I was I had to leave for just a, a couple of minutes, and from what I was told, apparently Generation Me, I would probably think Max Buck turned on Jeremy Buck again and caused their team to lose. So Brian Kendrick, Chris Saban, and Suicide. It was winter. Now, early in the night, there was an argument going on between Madison Rain and Tara. Something about Madison Rain wanted to do, and Tara didn't want to do, but anyway, it turns out um, they got on their motorcycle. Dykes on a bike. And um, apparently, they must have collided with Mickey James. Now, they didn't show the actual part of it. They only just showed the uh, part of them getting on the motorcycle. Then they came back for commercial break. The motorcycle was on the ground, and so was Mickey James. Then um, the match between Bully Ray and Christopher Daniels was made into a lumberjack match where it was Bully Ray with their team members, his respective team members of Immortal, um, with, and Christopher Daniels, respective team members of Fortune. Um, back in for, I would I would have liked to, the only thing I had a problem with this match is I would have liked to have seen it gone a little bit longer. But um, in the end, Hulk Hogan, with the referee distracted and the people fighting on the outside, Hulk Hogan came out with a chain around his fist and walloped Daniels right in the head, causing him to lose. Bully Ray gets the win in this one. And then and Jeff Jarrett, is before he um, comes out to uh, cut his promo or while he's cutting his promo, the ring crew is setting up a stage apparently to symbolize the, the, st uh, the steel cage match or the fact that Kurt Angle was, quote, arrested last week on Impact. And then Jack Kurt Angle, kind of like suicide, swings his way in because, you know, they had three three doors of it open or three sides of the cage open. They didn't have the last part, and that's where Kurt Angle, uh, a la suicide, goes in and swings into the ring. And then they both men proceed to take off their shirt. Apparently, they wanted uh, the world to see their man boobs. And <laughs> Jar Jarrett with the yellow streak going up his back and the pee going down his leg. <laughs> Um, runs out of the cage to again typical heel fashion and leaves Kurt Angle high and dry or if it was RVD mostly high speaking of RVD um, for this match it was a st um, stipulation added uh, courtesy of Mr. Anderson in the back requesting it that uh, he wanted to be the special guest referee and and basically you know he said that to Hogan you know you scratch my back I'll scratch yours and um, in, in the match um, Anderson hit Sting with a mic check and RVD had no idea this happened. RVD hit the five-star frog splash. Anderson counts to three count. And, uh, and of course, after the match was over, Anderson also attacked RVD. Now, we had Gunner and Rob Terry come out congratulating Anderson on uh, what he did and had him on his shoulders. And everybody was thinking, oh, this is the heel turn for Anderson. Anderson is showing a mortal. He's going to be the heel of the match. And then he goes along with it, and then at, when he gets down, he takes a lead pipe and wallops Rob Terry right in the gut, and then um, gives a mic check to to Murphy and gives a mic check to Rob Terry, and then mocks Hulk Hogan with the, the ear cupping. So that was pretty much your TNA impact for this week. So if you guys watched Impact, do me a favor. Leave me your comments in the comment section below. I want to hear what you guys thought of this week's Impact. So until then, I'm Double B Billy Boudreaux, a.k.a. Wrestle Gamer, here on the WGS YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching.